A lot of you would like to be able to weld aluminum with your MIG welder and specifically weld aluminum with a spool gun. But as you know, a lot of MIG welder machines don't come equipped to handle spool guns. One of those machines is the early model of the Yes Welder MIG 250 Pro. It was not set up for the factory to run a spool gun. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to be modifying the Yes Welder MIG 250 Pro for a spool gun. I'll include links for all of the items that I used for this modification and I'll list them in the description of this video. The total cost of the modifications that I did were just right around $18. Now your cost might be more or less depending on what switch and wire you choose to use, but roughly in the neighborhood of $20 you can pretty much get this modification done and adapt your MIG welder for a spool gun. The Yes Welder MIG 250 Pro is ideal for these modifications and to weld aluminum with a spool gun because it has synergic settings already programmed into the machine for aluminum as well as it has manual voltage and wire speed controls. This video is going to be the modifications to the machine only and no welding. It's going to be a fairly detailed and potentially lengthy video so I will make a second video just testing out the machine that I make the modifications on and we'll see how it actually MIG welds aluminum using the spool gun. I will link that particular video once I get it complete in the description of this video as well. Alright, let's get into the modifications. I bought a variety pack of connectors here for the wire. Way more than what you need, but I like this pack and I use these for other things as well. A three pull switch. You just need a switch that has three connectors and an on-on or just an on-off-on. Flip it one way, it'll control a motor that way, and then flip it the other way and it controls a completely separate motor. And then this was the kind of the hard part to find. I could, I could only buy a male and a female set, but this is a 16M2. So it's the same two-pin connector that the Yes Welder spool gun has. This is the end that is on your Yes Welder spool gun, and then this is the part you need. This is the part that connects to the case of the machine so you can connect your spool gun. And then you're going to need some wire. I just have some scrap wire here. I think this is 14 gauge with a pretty thick insulation on it. I think you can get away with 16 or 18 gauge for this by looking at the wires that are in the machine. And I'll list uh, some wire down there for you too, a uh, link, to, link to that. All right, let me uh, get you in here a little bit closer and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, so here's the wire feed motor that's installed inside the machine and it has two wires coming from it, a positive and a negative, and they come up and connect to this connector up here on top of this circuit board. The black, the negative, and the second one over, this one here, the middle one, go down to that motor. And these two wires that connect up here onto this connector go through that hole over and out to the uh, Euro connector. So when you pull the trigger on the Euro connector, it tells this board to open the gas solenoid and to turn the wire feed motor on. So the, the Euro connector on the Yes Welder spool gun will fit right on here with but no problems and it will activate the board and tell it to send gas and it will also tell it to turn on the motor but a spool gun has the wire feed motor in the spool gun itself so having this motor turn on is not going to do you any good so that's what we're going to do is add a switch that we can flip to the spool gun position and then when you pull that trigger on your uh, spool gun this board will send power to the motor in your spool gun just like Yes Welder did it and we're going to install it in the same place. I want to try to do this modification not all chopped up and hacked. I want it to look basically factory. So the first thing we need to do is locate where we're going to drill a hole. We're going to mount that switch right up here. Okay, I've got this mark. There's an X. You just need to make sure it's not going to interfere with the 11 pound spool of wire. And then check the back side and make sure that you've got room to drill that hole this needs to be about a half inch diameter hole in order to fit the switch that I'm using into that metal right there. Make sure you're not going to drill into any wires or anything on the backside. And this one is overkill. This is a 15 amp switch. The motor on this machine is only about a one and a half to two amp 
motor. So it's overkill. If you wanted to find yourself a smaller switch or a different type of switch, you could do that. But I chose this switch because I just need one half inch hole and it's real easy to mount instead of trying to cut a square in there to fit a different type of switch. So that's what I'm going to use. And then I'm going to use a step bit in order to drill that hole. And this one is a half inch step bit. So I need to make sure that I've got that much of that step bit poking through there. I'm not going to tear anything up on the back side. All right, so I've got my switch installed and see how I just missed the uh, circuit board here. Make sure you don't hit any wires when you're drilling that hole. It's pretty close. The farther you go over this way, the closer you're going to get to that wire spool area and you don't want to get over there too close to that. So this switch will fit right there real nice. Okay, the next hole to drill, and this is probably the most difficult one of the two. Yes Welder has that plug mounted right between this cord and that outlet. And I'm going to measure and put a mark centered between these two. You don't have a lot of room to play with here. And this hole needs to be slightly larger. I don't know exactly what size yet. Slightly larger than a half inch. But if you can see behind here, you can look through that space. We've got the uh, regular drive unit. So there you can see it's going to be in the way of drilling that hole through here using a a long step bit like I want to use. There's four screws on the bottom that hold this unit in there. Now I don't know if I take those four screws out if I can move this enough to get it out of the way. It's got a couple wires and the gas hose that goes through that bulkhead and the motors hanging out on the other side of it. So I'm going to take these four screws out, just four Phillips screws from the bottom and see if I can move that out of the way enough to, to be able to drill that hole. All right, there is enough slack in all these wires and hoses to pull that out and back far enough away to where I can get right down in here to get that hole drilled. I'm going to use a different step bit that I have. These are just Harbor Freight step bits, real cheap. And it looks like I'm going to need 11 16 inch hole. So I hope this one will do it. I have that size on it, but I just don't know if it's going to fit down in between these two pieces of plastic. I may have to remove this. I don't know. I hope not. Let's give it a shot. This connector that goes in that hole I just drilled is a solder type connection on the back. There's a number one and a number two. I checked the polarity on the factory machine and number one is positive, number two is the negative. And I just have a black and a white wire. So I'm going to put the black on number two, which is the negative, and the one will be the positive. Thank you. 
the switch I bought with only three poles on it, all that goes to that switch is the positives. Positive for this motor, positive for the motor on the gun, which is this white one, and then the positive coming from the uh, circuit board. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up the grounds. Now this black wire on the left hand side of this top connector is the ground and if you follow it down it goes down to the ground on the motor. So I just pulled out a section here. There's plenty of wire here to work with. Well not plenty but there's enough. And I'm just going to cut that, clean up both ends, twist those together and put on a female spade connector to connect those two together and I'll show you where I'm going with this. So I'm just going to pull out enough of that to get a good loop there and cut it. Make sure you're cutting the right one. So let me get those twisted together and we'll, I'll crimp on a female end spade connector. I'm using the blue ones for this size wire. So I don't have the right crimp tool so I'm just going to, I stripped off the plastic insulation on my male and female spade connectors. And I'm just going to crimp those on because I can get a good crimp with just needle nose pliers. And I'm going to put uh, shrink wrap over the entire joint. So that's the way we'll, that's the way I'm going to have to do it since I don't have the proper crimping pliers for this. Now the white wire, which is my hot, coming from the plug that I put on the front of the machine, is power that goes to the uh, wire feed motor in the spool gun. I flip the switch up, it puts power to the bottom blade. When I put the switch down, it puts power up to the top blade. So I want the switch up for spool gun, so I need to put my power for the spool gun on this bottom blade. So I'm just going to pull this out here, cut about an inch off, and put another connector on here so I can plug it right into this. What I've done is uh, I need to get power from the circuit board over to this pin. So I take the third wire, the center one, the, the center one of the three, and if you follow it, it goes down to the positive of the motor. And I cut it right in here about halfway or so. I just needed enough to be able to put an end on it and I put a female plug end on here. And that way I can bring the power from the board over to the center pin on my switch. And the last one is this positive, comes from this motor, will connect to the top. So when the switch is down, power is going to that motor. When the switch is up, power is going to the motor in the uh, spool gun. So let me get an end on that piece, on this one. I'm going to have to actually extend that. So I'll do an extension, solder these two together, shrink tube it, and we'll get that plugged up and I'll come back and show you. This is the extended hot coming from the existing motor inside the machine. And it connects to the top pin up here on the switch. That's it. It's pretty clean inside. And it's going to be clean on the outside too. And that was the whole point. Actually, I'm going to hook things up and try it before I put the top on. We'll see if it works. Just a couple of things. I put a piece of tape on the drive wheel in the machine 
and I put a piece of tape on the drive wheel in the gun so you can see them on video and I did remove the drive wheel from the gun because I have a spool of aluminum wire in there and I don't want the MIG gun spilling out a bunch of wire. Pardon the fan noise. Okay, I've got the wire feed speed set on the lowest setting. We'll check and see if the wire speed also is adjustable in both the machine and the gun. Switch is in the down position, that should be the machine. So I'll pull the trigger and see which motor works. And that's clearly the machine only. Let's go to mid uh, spool gun. And the spool gun's working. All right, let's go to the highest wire feed speed. See what we got there on the spool gun. Fast. Back to the lowest. And let's try the machine. Lowest. Nice and slow. And let's go to the fast. Very fast. And back it down. So that's awesome. Now we'll just have to put the covers on and test it. Actually plug it in, set it up, hook up the gas and see if it'll run a bead. With the uh, Yes Welder MIG gun on the Yes Welder MIG 250 Pro. Modified.